What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Car Mechanic Simulator with me, the Virtual Mechanic. And, well, we'll get to today's project in just a moment. But first, we finished Speed Week. It was a lot of fun. We did add three cars to it. Sadly, one of them's already been knocked off. We've got the open wheel racer now sitting in the second place after Speed Week and the Rayfield Caliburn from Cyberpunk now in a third place with two very good speeds in there. We did get the Pagani Zonda Revolution in there with a top speed of 500 kilometers an hour. But when the Rayfield Caliburn went on, it did knock it off, which is a shame. But that's not what we're going to be thinking about today. Anyway, enough of that. Today, we are back with another Ford Mustang. This is a good one. This is the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 Super Snake with the 1,000 horsepower upgrade. This thing is a little bit insane. It's quite lightweight. It's done 167,000 kilometers. I picked it up from the auction where I got a little bit ripped off. Nothing special, only 1,500. So it's not too bad, but this has got a beast of the double overhead cam supercharged engine. With base 1,000 horsepower, we will be increasing that today. We will be keeping it with the same engine. There's very little left of it, which means we're going to have to build that engine back up again from scratch, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. This is absolutely stunning. So this was modded in by Payne, Golly, and a French Toast. Well done, gentlemen, to all three of you. Absolutely fantastic work. I'm assuming French Toast did deliveries, so we will get to them a little bit later on. These should be good. I know what I've got in mind for this, but whether it stays that way will be a different scenario. Obviously, we're going to finish off this bodywork. In fact, let's just quickly go into the shop and talk about the bodywork on this. With the Ford Mustang, you get lots of parts. As you can see, there is 15 pages of stuff for this car. Absolutely insane. But a lot of it is sort of listed relatively well, relatively not. Obviously, we know ours is the Super Snake, so we can go with any of these ones here, GT500 Super Snakes. That's what we'll mostly be looking out for on the parts, um, things that say Super Snake or things like that. So we'll be keeping an eye out. There you go, look, front bumper, the GT500 KR Super Snake. We could also have this front bumper as well. I think you can mix and match with any of them, but we're going to try and keep it all the GT500 Super Snake or the GT500 if not, or we've also got just the Super Snake. So there's a few bits to pick around and buy. There's a lot to go with this. There's quite a few different models, but let's get stuck in with ours. Let's head over to the car wash and let's get it cleaned up. Here we are then at the car wash with the Super Snake and let's get it cleaned, although it doesn't look too bad anyway. Always nice to get it done. There are a few parts missing, but we will deal with that later on. In fact, it looks a lot worse now that I've cleaned it. I wish I hadn't. Let's get the interior done. Let's get it back on the lift and let's get what little of that engine is left ripped out. It's time to start pulling that engine out. Let's have a look. It is only the block and the crankshaft, so there's no oil pan. So let's just jump straight in and start getting this gearbox and a drive shaft off. I can't even get to the drive shaft. There we go. Thank you. Let's get you off and let's get that gearbox ripped out. Come on. There we go. Obviously, we can see that there is a lot missing from this engine because I just have the block and the crankshaft. I don't even have any pistons, I don't think. No, no pistons, literally the block, the crankshaft, and the clutch set up. That is all we have for this Mustang. So we are going to have to pretty much build the new engine, although we will be keeping it with the double overhead cam at supercharged engine. Let's get the block and crankshaft ripped out. That was nice and easy. I didn't expect that to be difficult at all. Let's see what we've got going on in this engine bay. Absolutely nothing, but what is missing? There we go. So we are missing inch cooler, ABS pump and module, radiator, all of the reservoirs, ECU, the fuse box, the battery, the brake servo, and the air filter. So we're going to have to buy all of that brand new. It was all missing. Where is the fuel tank for this car? I wonder. I don't appear to have a fuel tank. Let's have a look. Oh, there they are. Dual fuel tanks down the back here. I just couldn't see them. We are missing all of the exhaust as well, so we do need to buy all of that. But let's have a jump in and take a quick look at the suspension. First wheel off then. Let's see what we've got. It is. It looks like it's just the lower arm. It is just the lower arm. We'll come out of that view with a single straight up shock. That is nicely compressed. It's not over compressed. It's not overworked. We've got the end link, the sway bar. Yeah, that's all looking like it's there. Suspension, it looks like it's pretty complete at the front. Nothing looks like it's missing, so that's good. Let's have a look at the rear. Get you off wheel. Off you come. Out you go. There we go. 
And yeah, we also look like we're pretty much all there with the rear suspension as well. Doesn't look like anything's missing off of this, so that's good. I'm going to start getting all of this stripped down. Uh, then we're going to dismantle. I'm not even going to show you the dismantling of the engine. We're just going to get that one stripped. Next up then will literally be the bodywork getting sorted. I'm going to get, obviously, go and buy all the stuff I need to build that engine back up a bit later. But video-wise, we're just going to jump straight into stripping off that bodywork, getting the frame sorted and building it back up. I'll see you in a moment. I think that's everything I need so far. So let's get in and get this body stripped down. Off with the hood, only at 10%. Can't even repair it. I can repair that fender though, so that's good. That fender I cannot. We'll see what I can repair when we come to the end. Off with the door, a mirror and a window. Uh, that's classed as body A. I don't know. This is bizarre. It's not bizarre. It all makes sense. It's just trying to figure out what's body panels and what's not on your first run through like there there we go i don't think i would have got that car part two that's that off with the door mirror and the windows let's get this interior out as well while we're here out you come pretty boring interior maybe we'll stick with it maybe we won't we'll see probably not that's the interior out i believe that's everything no i'm missing rear right fender and rear left fender so where are they then there they are, down there, I see side skirts, ideal, that should be everything off, let's have a look, yes, that looks like everything off page one, a 1%, 1 ideal, let's get the frame sorted out based on the value of the car, 1500, 1500, ideal, nice, so we'll get that done, and then we'll get all the body panels, I'm going to repair some of this, buy some more then we'll head over to the paint shop and take a look at the beautiful liveries that come up with the stunning ford mustang okay then let's get this body all back together now the frame is sorted before we head over to the paint shop as you'll be able to see going through this a lot of it is just the super snake keeping it simple keeping it easy making sure we get all the right parts for this car so it looks the best it possibly can i did change the lights but they are still super snake lights I think they look pretty sweet in there. The front bumper is the, you know, racy looking one, looking pretty sweet. Uh, the doors, I just kept them standard. There isn't any that say Super Snake on them, so I just left them as they are. Mirrors are the Super Snake, and obviously windows are just windows, although I did go for the one with the stripe on it. We'll see whether I like that later on. We may change it off. I'm undecided yet. Um, obviously, just loads of stuff going on here. As I said, a lot of it is just the Super Snake to keep it all in line apart from the tail lights i went for these ones i just think they look pretty sweet with the lights on and they sort of match the front lights as well oh forgot the exhausts they looked like white tips on the thing which i thought was pretty cool but they're not actually white tips which is a bit of a shame but nearly finished now i've just got to get these last bits done the interior done and my license plate obviously you can already see i've gone i've gone for a new york plate with Virtual Mechanic a GT500 on it. Looking pretty cool. I'm liking that. Let's get the interior in. I did change the interior ever so slightly. Nothing too drastic though. I kept the rear bench as it was because it fits. And I just put Nismo seats in the front. And then I've gone for steering wheel 8 there. Looking pretty sweet. I am liking the look of this. It looks pretty mean. What colour are we going to go for then? I don't know. Let's head over to the paint shop. And let's check out some of the liveries. Okay, then let's quickly fly through this because there are 31 liveries to go with the Ford Mustang. In at spot number one, we've got the Barricade Police Edition looking pretty sweet. Slot number two is the 5.4 Cobra Jet. Awesome. Slot number three is the GT500 KR Black Stripes. Number four is the sort of grey stripes. Let's change it to black so you can see it a bit more with the GT500 KR. Number five is blue stripes, looking pretty sweet. Six is black stripes, I believe. Change it back to white. Yeah, black stripes with the Super Snake GT500. Probably one of these would be what we're going for. You've got the gold stripe. Uh, then you've got the grey-ish stripe. Let's just go back to black. And then you should have a white stripe on there. And then number 10 is probably a black stripe with some description. Black two stripes, GT500. Then we've got the blue two stripes, red two stripes, and I believe that's the white two stripes. Yeah, in the GT500. Uh, then we've got the borderline down the side there in the black. 
uh, a frozen thing. There we go. Then the Hot Wheels at number 15. A pretty sweet colouring on that. Uh, number 16 is just the black roof, I believe. We'll just double check that. Yeah. 17 is the Mustang down the side with the black sun strip. 18, I believe that's the same, but in white. Yes. 19, I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah. There's, these are the saline ones, pretty much. So you go down there, a little bit of blue, a little bit more blue. Then they're into sort of like the grey colour or the whitey colour. Then the black with the saline logo. Then the blue with the saline logo. The different blue with the saline logo. Then the white with the saline logo. Then we got some black stripes looking a pretty sweet. Red stripes. Uh, white stripes. Yeah, white stripes. Then we've got the racing edition looking pretty sweet. And in spot 31, we've got the orange racing edition. And that is all of them. So now I'm going to pick what I'm going to go for. I've already got a sort of idea in mind, but I'll meet you back here in a second. So here's what I've gone for for the GT500 Super Snake. This beautiful green with the black stripe running over the hood and down the side there with the Super Snake GT500. Little bit of inspiration that come up from Hoovy's garage, from Hoovy's. Uh, Ford Mustang GT500 he bought quite recently he bought it from new obviously it's not the same model he's got a 2021 model but it's just inspired by it looking a pretty sweet definitely going to have black rims on this one uh probably black out most of the suspension with a few green parts maybe the brake calipers in green something on the shocks maybe something like that and definitely the engine head covers there with some greens and a black tin making this one look as cool as we can but that's it. I've got some suspension parts to paint, some engine parts to paint, and then we'll get that assembly all started, starting off with the suspension going back in in a moment. OK, then let's start getting this car back together. Let's take a look at the shocks. I went for green shocks with black springs on this one. Looking at pretty sweet. Now, a lot of the underside is blacked out, but let's see what it looks like when it's on there. Thrown some of the bits that you can't paint in already. So let's just crack on. Let's get a better view of this. That was a bit too close, but never mind. This cross member there in the black. Let's get the bushings in as I'm right in their face. Um, I did not intend to be this close. So let's come away from this if we can. There we go. Lower suspension arm in the black as well. Looking at just clean, tidy and neat. There we go. And then obviously the shock is in that green. Just to throw a shock to the system. Pun intended. I am really sorry. And then we've got green brake calipers going on there as well to tie in with the green. And then a black hubcap just to finish it all off. We've also got the sway bar end front link on there as well. That is the front end setup complete. Looking pretty tasty. Only with black and green. Just how I like it. Nice and clean and nice and tidy. Rear axle is in the black. Oh, let's get away from that. There we go. Uh, knuckle housing can't be painted we'll get some of this stuff that can't be painted on the front here on you go make sure it is complete get that disc on and the brake pad on and then we'll get some of the other bits so the spring cap i did in green at the back here because the spring itself is in black and i just think it's quite a good alteration of the colors looking pretty sweet i also did the shock in green as well just to throw some color down here control arm in the black rubber bushing and not paintable on you go and uh, then they've got the underplate in the green and then the two U-bolts also in green as well. Just to throw a bit of extra colour down the back because the front is going to have the engine. Brake caliper obviously in the green at the back looking at pretty sweet. That is the rear end complete. Well, half of it anyway. I'm going to crack on and get the other half done. And then next up, we, will, we are going to sort out that beautiful engine bay. There are a few bits of colour in there, but nothing special. So I'll see you up there in just a minute. Here's the suspension all finished then. Gloss black and that pearl or custom pearl green running through it. You've got obviously the brake calipers, the shocks and then the spring caps down at the back in green there. Looking at pretty sweet, but we do now to get this engine bay sorted out. Let's start throwing a few of these bits in. The radiator with its fan housing, the normal fan housing, not the dual fan ones. So let's get all of these reservoirs in while we're here little bit of ECU as well. Battery, I've got that because I had to buy it new anyway, so I didn't have to stick it on charge. Uh, and then the fuse boxes and the air filter. I was going to go green, but the engine bay itself is green, so I have just kept them black. They do look pretty cool still, though. Let's just get the air filter in and on because 
we've got the clips to go on this. And do you know what I think I forgot? I've just seen it at the corner of my eye, just down here, the ABS pump. I think I may have forgot the pump and module. I don't think I've bought them. Let's find out. Did I? No, I didn't think I did. So let's quickly head over to the electronic shop. You can go away. There we go. Let's have a look for the ABS module and the ABS pump. There we go. Now let's get you on like you're supposed to be. There we go. That is the engine bay complete apart from the fuse box, which I'm going to go finish now. I did the air filter with the green clips just to keep a bit of green in there. And I'll show you why I didn't keep them black because of all the green in there. It's pretty green inside that engine bay, so I thought I'd go for a black with a splash of green. Same with the fuse box. I'm going to get that finished. Next up, we're going to go build that beautiful supercharged engine. Let's get this supercharged engine finished then. I've already started. As you can see, I've got gloss black on the main engine block and the oil pan down there. But let's start throwing a few of these other bits on. Engine heads, disappointingly, only paint on the inside. I've got so used to the ones painting all the way around in the performance parts. But sadly, we're back to normality with the normal engines and the heads. Can't be painted on the outside, which is a shame. I probably wouldn't have kept them green if I could. I probably would have just gone for a black. But as they're silver, I thought, you know, let's go for the inside green. Power steering pump, I didn't paint because I just thought, why not? We'll just keep the front bits in their silvers. Alternator can't be painted anyway. Looking at pretty sweet. The next bit painted is the manifold. And I have just kept it black. Sadly, it is just what it is. Supercharger, on you go. Can't be painted is just in its cool supercharger silver colour. I have done the fuel rails in green though, just to try and match out a little bit. Lots of black and green going on. Um, I'm going to get some of these bits in, so the camshafts in, um, spark plugs and these exhaust manifolds, because they can't be painted either. And then we'll see what it looks like with the engine heads on, the rest of the belts and the timing cover on the front there in a moment. There you go, the head's internally all finished, so I've got to get two timing belts on, one to either side to make sure they match up, and then we can get this timing cover on here. I have done this one in green, just because I wanted a bit of colour underneath all the belts and rollers, because there are a lot of them, as you can see. And I thought it'll hide the green, and there's no point doing it black, because then you won't be able to see it anyway. So let's get all of these on, quick as we can. Come on, game. A little bit faster than that, please, if you bill. One, two, three, on with the pulley, on you go, on with the roller, on you go, and then the water pump pulley as well. Front end nearly finished, we got two belts, a belt tensioner, I always forget what they're called, and another roller to go on there, just down here, there you are, on you go, that's the front end complete, see why I wanted just a splash of green in there? was just a little bit too covered so then the engine head covers obviously in the green i might need to darken that up just a little bit you know do you know what i think i'm going to here we go then the third time's the charm it is quite a lot darker but obviously because the engine head's only plastic it still shows up very light it's still quite light but it does sort of match uh the fuel rail that you've got going on in there and things like that so we're going to stick with that looking pretty sweet then i'll get the cover on top of this coil covers on there in the black so we've got the black and a green combination throttle although it shows up in the paint shop cannot be painted i don't know why it shows up yeah it's actually a little bit annoying but i'm going to get on and get the other side of this engine finished then we're going to get it dropped in so i'll meet you back by the car in just a couple of moments there she is then, the black and green supercharged V8, all finished. Let's get it dropped in to the Super Snake. Off you come of the stand. Let's go and get it in. I'm looking forward to this one. It is cool as I really like this car. I'm a huge Mustang fan anyway, both modern and old. That is looking a pretty sweet, maybe a little bit too green. And I'm glad I brought the color, the darkness of these engine head covers down. Because they would have been way too bright in there otherwise. But that is looking pretty sweet. Few bit of little bits to go on. Got to get that gearbox in. So let's get it up in the air and get that done right now while we are here. Come on. In you go. On you go. Let's get you on in a lovely gloss black. Because it kind of just had to be here really. Would have been a bit too much in the green I think. Starter in the green just because why not. We can. And let's get that drive shaft on. We'll get the exhaust while we're here as well. Then I'm going to get some wheels picked and on. You'll see them outside in the sun when this one is all finished, which will be just a few moments. I'll see you outside in just a minute. 
Here we are then with the finished Super Snake looking absolutely fantastic, at least I think so, in this stunning pearl green or custom pearl green with the black uh, Super Snake GT500 livery going with it. And obviously, I, you can see I've blacked out the rims. The rims I've gone for are the GW500. They are actually what came on it as standard. After a tiny, tiny little bit of research, they are the closest matching to the Shelby Special Edition rims or 50th Anniversary rims that you can actually get. They're very close to it. I did them in black. They are slightly bigger than standard. These are 21 inches. All four are 21 inches. Uh, the fronts are a 255 width, which is standard, and a 25 profile, which is a little bit smaller than standard. The backs are 285 width, which is a little bit smaller than standard. Starts at a 305, I think with a 25 profile again smaller than standard but 21 inch so the rims are bigger they just stick out a tiny little bit the originals were 305 and they stuck out a little bit further i didn't like it so i just brought the width down to sort of make it fit and my god this thing looks insane i'm so happy with how this turned out very good job to pain a golly and a french toast there combined effort to make this a mustang as beautiful as it is they've done a fantastic job Link in the description below to go and grab this Mustang from the workshop with all three of their names included in that link. Anyway, let's jump into this. I am going to quickly jump in and start this one up because it does sound just the same as every other supercharged engine. So let's go. Pretty basic on the just ticking over. Give it some revs. Still sounds pretty mean but it is the same as every other. So let's head over to the dyno and see what power this one's got. Here we are then on the dyno with the 1000 horsepower GT500 Super Snake. We've thrown loads of performance parts on it today. So how much have we added to this insane engine and this insane car? Let's have a look. 956 horsepower gain and 96%. That's incredible. Bringing our total up to 1,900 and at 56 that is actually insane I'm very happy with that looking forward to getting this onto the track let's have a look at my gearbox setup today this is what i've gone for it's sort of the best i can do this car does not like to stay in a straight line in any way shape or form likes to go left right wheel spins everywhere but we're going to leave it at that let's head over to the track and see what speed i can get down the track with this beautiful mustang I'll be honest, I have busted out my controller for this one because this does not like to stay straight. I doubt I'm going to be able to get a good lap in, but let's give it a go. Very slow off the start, but you can see it's really trying. Into fourth gear is where it likes to spin, so off the gas a little bit there. And then we'll go not quite full throttle the rest of the way down the track. We'll keep it close, but not quite full, just to try and keep this one straight. What speed can we get out? You can see it's just starting to pull. That's a good speed though. My God, that's incredible. 540 kilometers an hour from the GT500 Super Snake. So uh, 540 kilometers an hour. I know Speed Week is officially over, but that makes it onto the Speedboard Champion. Into position number seven, knocking the Ford Bronco Police Cruiser off of the board. Shame, I don't like police cruisers anyway. This one is insane. It is actually just under the three-star Ford Mustang. I will find out what year that is and amend the speeder board or what model for later on. But this one was insane. It was incredible. Very, very hard to keep straight. That wasn't even at full gas all the way up. Could have definitely got some more out of it if I could keep it straighter. And I'll be honest, the, th the 285 width wheels did nothing for it. I did put 305 width ones back on it just for the speed run. Um, but it, it didn't help that much. It helped a little bit, but not that much. I still managed to keep it a bit straighter. So yes, maybe not go for the 205 whip wheels, although they do look pretty sweet. They don't keep it the straightest on the track. I did have to use my controller, which is the first time in a long time I've had to use a controller instead of my keyboard and mouse. But this one is great fun. It is excellent work by the combination of pain golly and french toast absolutely fantastic work the internal plaque there has actually got a number on it signed by shelby i will include an image of that one later on engine looks absolutely insane in it's green and black and i'm just loving how this car looks and how it drives it is incredibly fast it's hard to keep in a straight line and i will do another one of these for myself to keep later on 
probably change the color a little bit though but this is stunning absolutely incredible let's go on to some facts and figures about this one we obviously know it's now seventh in the speeder board so it will be going up there when i have a chance to update that but i bought the car for thirty three thousand and ninety six. 96 only a little bit under profit, uh, 1,500 short, I believe. I have spent 75,748 modifying this one today quite a bit. Pitting our total spend at 108,844, which is quite a lot. But let's have a look and see what we can sell this one for. Obviously, this is the Shelby GT500 Super Snake. Says it's a 1,000 horsepower upgrade. We know it's more than that. It is now a 1,956 horsepower upgrade which is absolutely incredible but how much can we sell this one on for 205,409 is the total sale price a minus our 108,844 leaves us with an actual profit of 96,565 which is incredibly good profit thank you very much for that i've definitely enjoyed working on this one it is time to say goodbye though off you go super snake you were so much fun i definitely enjoyed that but up next, we've got the BMW E30. This is an absolute little stunner. This is the BMW M3 E30. It is the lit edition. We probably will be keeping it, that one. Um, I picked it up from... Did I get it from the... I got it from the junkyard, which is why we're in profit. I bought it for 4,694, and we're already 1,000 over. This one's going to be a lot of fun. It is only 243 horsepower. We obviously will be increasing that one. This was modded in by Lit. It is excellent. Let's just have a quick look at the shop for it. What we've got, M30, lots of different parts. This is going to be a fun one to figure out. Only four pages, but still, there's lots of different body styles, lots of different hoods, bumpers, and things like that to go for. So this one is fun. This is uh, for Wednesday, though. Um, I know one of my friends, uh, or one of my friends and fans, Johnny Bravo, will be excited to see this one. He did mention it last week, I believe. I did say I was going to do it on Friday, but why not? Let's get it done on the Wednesday instead. I am looking forward to this one. That is it for today's video, though. If you did enjoy this video, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, anything you want to do to help this channel grow. But if you just want to watch the content, that is by far the best way you can support this channel. So thank you very much. That is it for today, though. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.